Mistakes, everyone makes them when investing in property. Us, perhaps more than most, but it's really important to learn from others' mistakes so you don't make the same ones yourself. And in that spirit, we're sharing them with you right now. The first mistake I'd like to talk about was a investment in some off-plan houses near Manchester. Obviously very good area, the deal was very good, the ROI would have been very good. On paper, everything looked great. Unfortunately, the developer didn't quite have their act together based on several things. The plot never got built and the developer washed their hands with the site. Fortunately, many years later, through legal action, got my deposit back. So I really was burnt by off plan. The reason I do it now is because I learned so much from that mistake. I now know how to protect my deposits. I know to look into the developer. I, I've learned all the lessons through that painful mistake so I can take advantage of it and not be burnt by it. Okay, my next one, tenant related one. I'm gonna call this the two involved mistake. So this is back in my self-managing days. I had a flat, I was renting out to two students, really lovely girls, absolutely fine. Kept the place brilliantly, paid the rent on time until one day out of the blue, one of them called up and said that they were giving in their notice. So I thought, okay, well, that's a shame, but not a problem. I'll start making preparations to relet it. Until a couple of weeks later, girl two phoned up and said that she just found out that notice had been given and she had no idea about it. Long story short, turns out girl one had gone a bit crazy and was saying things about there being ghosts in the walls. Now, ghosts in the walls were not picked up on our inspections. I don't believe that there are ghosts in the walls. <laughs> it all kind of unraveled and it all got very complicated. And I basically ended up having to mediate in this whole fallout between the two of them and all this stuff it became a bit of a soap opera and I think the mistake there was being too friendly and too involved. My next mistake has been the never-ending deal. Now I've been involved in this personally and professionally and it's where a deal is great on paper, looks awesome, you know below market value, really juicy, ROI is going to be really nice and it just drags on and drags on and months pass and you feel like you're getting nowhere. It's extremely frustrating. And the reason why you go after a deal that's a repossession deal, you have to accept that legally it might take longer because there's going to be more parties involved. They have to jump through more hoops. There might be legal problems that need to be resolved before you can buy it. Now, that can be frustrating. However, if you are getting a cracking deal and it's way below market value, then maybe it's worth that weight and that time sacrifice. But it's something to be aware of. So my lesson, Rob, really on that is sometimes a great deal, you have to pay for it in other ways. My next one, and this is where I had a, a refurb that needed to be done. I had a tenant moving out after a number of years. It needed some pretty significant work. And I was abroad at the time. So I got a recommendation for a project manager to come in, price it all up and manage the works. When the quote came back, it was double what I had in my head for what it should be. Now, I'm not an expert, so my idea of what it should be could have been way, way, way off base. But still, I was just thought that just doesn't seem right. And looking at the spec, it just seemed really over the top for what for what was necessary. So in the end, I put it on hold for a couple of weeks. I came back, spoke to a couple of local agents, and they said, no, that's ridiculously over the top. Here's what you should be doing. And in the end, I sacked that person off, did it myself, and got it done for pretty much the price I should have been in the first place. So that was kind of a mistake avoided by kind of spotting it and going, that just doesn't seem quite right. Funnily enough, Rob, my next mistake is tenant related as well. <laughs> this goes back to a deal I was involved in a few years ago now. What happened was we approached the seller, the seller was very keen, we got a great deal. However, in our contract, it said that all the tenants must be professionals star standard contract they agreed to it and if we found out subsequently that there were issues then we could pull out and you know it'll all be over we could withdraw for the sale now sneakily the seller told us that we couldn't get access to the properties or couldn't look at the asts made a load of the reasons up said you know the tenants uh you know don't want them finding out i don't know why we couldn't see the asts we plowed on until the day of completion when the asts magically all appeared. And on the day of completion, we spotted that not all the properties were professionals and a handful of them were actually DSS. Now, some people are happy and even want that type of tenant profile, but that's not what we bought into. However, the seller was obviously very clever because by the time we come to completion, they knew we were so committed to the deal that we were just gonna swallow that bit of pill and move forward, which we did. So a, a painful lesson, but ever since, the no exceptions now, 
I always demand to see the ASCs. My final one is also deal related, but it's a little bit different. It's not deals that fell apart, but it's deals I've missed out on. And I've missed out on them generally for one of two reasons. It's either been because I've just been too busy. And this happened to me a few times last year because last year was a spectacularly busy and then the other reason that I've missed out is because I've been too cautious and I like to do a lot of research and doing that research protects me against a lot of things going wrong but as a result I do sometimes miss out that means that I've probably avoided some painful mistakes but I've also missed out on a lot of really great opportunities and it's those that bug me a lot more than the things that do happen so I think you can be over cautious okay my last mistake because this is getting painful now it's happened to me more than once actually and it's happened to me professionally as well where the deal collapsed and it cost me big time. It's very painful when a deal you're very committed to collapses. And there are so many reasons why a deal can collapse. And actually, sometimes it's just not your fault. And even with the best prep, the best solicitors and the best intentions, deals go bad. Property goes bad. It collapses. The reason I bring it up is just really to accept that it happens. I think personally, when I'm going to deals, that about one in five won't work out. Now that might seem high and it probably is but it just helps me accept it that when it does happen but let's face it if you're doing a lot of property investment you're going to have deals that don't work out but the great thing about mistakes is if you learn from them they can be valuable so don't assume everything's always going to be great but don't let it put you off either plus you could always do things to reduce the risk of things going on wow you clearly love your property if you made it this far so make sure you subscribe And if you really, really love your property, you should check out the Property Podcast, the UK's most popular property podcast. Subscribe through iTunes or Spotify or however you consume your podcasts. But if you're a property fan, it's a must.